Hello everybody, I'm in Kiel PCRD research station in the north of Finland and I'm here to meet Thomas and to talk with him about technological innovation in the Arctic research and it's snowing. Hello, Thomas. Ah, oh, hello, Giulio. Nice ah. to meet you. How are you? Nice to meet you. Ah. I'm okay. Enjoy. Welcome to uh, Kilpis Järvi. My name is Thomas Gustafsson. I uh, am from Sweden. I live in Stockholm and I work for Interact, providing uh, knowledge to the scientists and the researchers how to use drones specifically in, in the Arctic environment. Um, so, Thomas. Uh, one of the topic of Interact is the use of technology for the Arctic research. What are the uses of drones in the Arctic research? We can use them for many things. Uh, mm -hmm. One is taking photos of uh, any areas or species or animals. Uh, another one is to send them out to remote areas to pick up something, mm -hmm. uh, pick up equipment, to collect uh, water samples for example. And some of these tasks can be dangerous, uh, it can be hazardous to walk out in a glacier and take samples of the snow or measuring the snow depth. So by using drones, uh, we can reduce this risk for yeah. some of the scientists. And I guess that they are happy about it, right? Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they're happy. They, uh, they really are eager to know about the new technology. I am getting to know quite a lot about the climate change and how to uh, provide them with, uh, with new technology to help them uh, in their research. Apart from using drones, are there other new technologies that could help their research in the Arctic? A colleague of mine, uh, Marianne Karl, is uh, working uh, together with me with uh, a technology called artificial intelligence and machine learning. My name is uh, Maria Erma. I'm from southern Sweden. My name is uh, Carl Sundström. I am a Swedish engineer working at the consultancy company AFRI. And I'm an expert in artificial intelligence and machine learning. My work consists of uh, innovative solutions within AI and machine learning. Uh, we have used AI to classify automatically the images for it to recognize what kind of animal is it. So you can take new pictures and the system will classify the images and it can say, okay, this was a certain species without a human uh, looking at it. We want to understand the, the world around us, but also to see how population changes, how are we potentially affecting them, how is our impact, uh, like human impact, affecting these animals. And then you have to have very good data on the population size and how it changes. It is different to work in the Arctic compared to other environments. Yeah, it's uh, different. It's a little bit more challenging and, and uh, you know, the climate. Uh, we are now in a, a place where it's minus 20 degrees outside and a lot of snow. So you have to think, uh, especially when using drones, uh, this is a, a technology that can be sensitive to the cold environment. For example, one is batteries getting cold. Um, you have snow and ice on the propellers and on the, on the drones that might affect security for the flying. So. These are, are important things to remember. The technology in our life is very important. I think we cannot live without it today. Uh, and we need to uh, adapt to it and also take part of it, learn how to use it in the best way. New sensors that's coming, we can have them put sensors on the drones for measuring gases or, or uh, taking temperatures from different layers of the, of the atmosphere or the, or the air. It's important to know a little bit about what they're doing and how the researchers and scientists are working, especially with the climate change in this specific environment. I believe that the most important thing that technology, for instance, AI or machine learning can do is actually to help researchers by reducing their manual work, make them save a lot of man hours so they can spend their time more into research. I think technology can both make life harder and easier. I think if we get too reliant on technology, we might lose the basic needs. Uh, so we can't forget our past, but we also have to be innovative for the future. Did you ever had lost a drone, maybe 
it flow away and never come back? Well, I have had some crashes. Um, oh. Really not lost a drone. I think uh, everyone that is using drones um, sooner or later will have, have a crash. But uh, as long as you fly it within line of sight, uh, you are usually safe. How far can fly a drone? It depends on the technology, but uh, usually today a drone that you can buy in the store can fly several kilometers away. And uh, that is, of course, an advantage to take from uh, the drones in, in the Arctic because they are large areas, remote areas that you want to access. Do you have a drone with you by chance here in uh, Oh, yes, I actually have one. So oh. I think you have read the, this uh, manual already. Yes. So you know so the if basic. I read this, I'm ready to, to operate with a drone? Yeah, you have the basic rules and the basic <laughs> te technology in here. So. Um, just remember some of it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the most important is uh, don't fly nearby people. Uh, yeah. Fly within your drones and line of sight. Okay. And, uh, and be respectful. I am respectful. So yes. Yes, I am. Uh, so could you please show me how to, to operate with the drone? Yeah. You want to go Wait. outside? Are you dressed for that? Bring your clothes. Okay. Let's go. Go. <laughs> and is it dangerous? Uh, not really dangerous. I hope so. All right, so now we are outside here in the in cold the, Keepers Yarvi. Yes, in the super cold. <laughs> Minus 20 degrees and uh, a lot of snow. A lot of snow, but it's wonderful. Yeah, and now we're going to fly this one. So this is a drone. Yeah, this mm -hmm. is a drone. Um, what is the most important thing that I, I told you in, inside? The battery. The battery, yes. Yes, and I have the battery in my pocket in a very warm place. Yes, thank you. I'll put it on the drone. Yes. Like this. Yeah. And I have oh. the controller in a warm place because it also has the battery in it. Mm -hmm. And now we are in a place where there are no people around. No birds, uh, no animals. No that can uh, uh, be harmed by a uh, falling down uh, drone. Mm -hmm. And then we have to move away a little bit from the yes. drone before we start it. So we can hover for a while, see that everything is working. And it is. Seems like, yes. Yes. Okay. Wow, ciao. But you have to control on the screen, not the, the drone itself, right? Yes, but you have to keep it in line or sight. So now you can use the sticks to control it. May I? Sure. Yes, uh, take it. Yes. Uh, this one is for the height. Wow. Back and forth. Easy. Right. And this high. Oh. And then you can turn around the drone to get oh. another view, like this. Okay, so we can fly towards the mountain. Look at the mountain. Yes. <laughs> so now we can wow, go and uh, take some photos over there. Yes, why not? Will you press that button? Ah, that button. Oh wow, it's flying. It's a miracle. I can do that. But what's happening? It looks like it's going to Greece. <clears throat> do you see it? Because I don't. I think it's gone. It's gone? Yeah. Who sent you? Terry sent me. Oh, by the way, Thomas, I have a very last question for you. Uh, what do you see in the future in terms of new technologies applied to the Arctic research? We can use all this data that scientists have collected through many years mm -hmm. to produce some results. These results can be spread to, uh, to the public uh, about the climate change and uh, about the, the environment in the Arctic. And you're an optimist? Yes, I'm optimist about that. Okay. But Hey. Ah, that's uh, my drone again. It's your drone. May I use it again? Oh, yes. Are you Take sure? Easy. Take it easy. <laughs> wow. Hey. Take it easy. Take it down. <laughs> All right. Nice. Now, now you land it. W what yes, if I push, push button. this button? Oh, yes. Push that button. Uh, oops. Up. Oh. I better take this. Okay. <laughs> but it was, it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> In the future, uh, when it comes to drones, I will see that we will use a lot of drones, uh, not only in the Arctic, everywhere in the society we will see the drones. 
it will be an important technology to help us to do anything in our daily life.